I always think that the work of leadership really begins uh, when you proclaim that that's something you want to do and you make that commitment process. The CEO series, uh, unlike other um, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, is really not about CEOs giving back to this. It's about giving something to themselves. What we've learned through this process is actually CEOs need to be nurtured. Uh, they need to be in a group of cross-sector colleagues who uh, may not necessarily understand their businesses or what they're doing, but who understand what leadership requires. I really put my hats off to uh, Mekau Kang and uh, Brad Hewitt, uh, who co-chaired the first collaborative. Honestly, realizing that in order to lead on inclusion and diversity, you had to start with yourself. And to be able to kind of take my own inventory of cultural competency, to be able to share that with others in a safe and uh, non-judgmental space, to be able to kind of know that we have to develop personally before we're able to lead others in our executive teams and before we actually bring transformational change to an entire organization. It starts in a small contained group. And so the DEI Collaborative really allowed me to not just understand the process, the language, but the real meaning of what inclusion uh, is. And to have a self-assessment, to share it with others, was uh, something I had not imagined even going into it. And the power of that was very uh, important. The DEI Collaborative meant so much to me that I went through it as a participant and then I went through it again as one of the co-chairs. And I have to say that I continually learned um, through that process. And it's really a deeply introspective look first at what do you bring? What's your mental framework? What's your mindset that you're bringing into this? How is it affecting or not your ability to um, welcome, attract, retain uh, people who have diverse ways of thinking, diverse backgrounds to you know your life, let alone your organization. Then the other step is like, okay, then how is our organization doing? I mean, we we looked measurably, you know, between the cohort as, gosh, how are we doing on hiring, retaining, advancing, all of those things that make us, uh, you know, a high-performing organization. And then we looked at, gosh, what can we we do as we do here uh, in this neck of the woods in Minnesota. We look at what can we do together. I would say it's absolutely worth the investment and worth the time. In addition to creating a network of, of colleagues that you can share ideas with and ask questions and, and learn and grow and develop as a leader, uh, you know, think about the workplace here and how increasingly we're going to be in competition for talent. And that talent comes from a diverse background and so you as leaders need to actually understand and embrace this whole notion of learning and growing and finding ways to actually create a, a diverse and equitable and an inclusive workplace to attract the best talent that you can attract. When I went into the DEI Collaborative, I was focused on what ideas am I going to bring back for us to move forward on as a company? What learnings am I going to take for us to build on in terms of our own initiatives with DEI? What I wasn't thinking so much about is how is it going to change me as a leader? And how is it going to change my approach to DEI as a leader? Leadership requires that we, if we're going to focus on equity and really move our organizations and the region, that we do some disciplined self-examination, uh, some uh, unpacking of who we are, uh, what we represent to our organizations and beyond, and uh, that we do it in a place where others can actually understand us um, and they can assist.